Hey guys and welcome back to A My name is Chad Chad. Really. Today I'm gonna be watching the after series because I hate myself and you guys told me to do it. Thanks guys, really appreciate it. I think that I watched one YouTube video on the first one, which came out in 2019. And now in 2021, three years later, there's already two more, which is an exponential rate for movies to be produced. I don't know who's behind that. Just a quick recap of what I know about this series from just like hearsay. Number one, it was based on a Wattpad story, kind of like The Kissing Booth, <laughs> which was incredible, as we all know. Number two, it was based, or was supposed to be a Harry Styles fanfic. Number three, it's terrible. Number four, it's terrible. I want to watch the whole series, but I can't sit here and watch three movies in a row while I'm filming. I will, I will be here for like 12 hours. So we're just going to start with the first one and see how it goes. Good luck to me. Pray for me. Or if you're not religious, you can Venmo me, I guess. Hey guys, just a quick disclaimer. That was a joke. There is no Chad Chad Venmo account, so if you see one, please don't send them money. I'm doing fine, actually, because this video is sponsored by Confessions of a Rebel. This is a new niche brand dedicated to celebrating the rebelliousness in all of us by creating fragrances that excite and inspire. Confessions of a Rebel's mission is to defy categorization and gender binaries in the fragrance industry while helping everyone to find their signature scent. Because everyone deserves to smell amazing. Responsible sourcing is also essential and Confessions of a Rebel goes straight to the source for their ingredients and works with the best and brightest small batch farmers. All fragrances are vegan and cruelty free. I received Let's Be Real, this conditioning body wash, Get a Room, and samples of About Last Night, Love High, and Almost Single. My favorite is Let's Be Real. This one smells amazing and has a bouquet of orange zest, lavender, and orange blossom, then some vanilla bean and cashmere woods to ground it a little bit. This conditioning body wash, Get a Room, smells incredible and I've used it so many times since receiving it. It has a fruit-based smell with apple and mandarin and makes my skin feel super soft. Most of the ones I received are more fruity scents like Love High, which has notes of jasmine, apple, peach nectar, and orange flower. But if you want something warmer with less fruity elements, Almost Single has some spice fueled by cardamom and black pepper with some deeper hints of sandalwood and rosemary. If you wanna check out Confessions of a Rebel, be sure to use my code CHAD to get 20% off your Confessions of a Rebel fragrance so that you can act now, confess later. Thank you to today's sponsor and let's get back to the video okay so we're walking naked in the woods that doesn't usually end well biblically there are moments in our lives that seem to define us i'm gonna be your spirit guide <laughs> we can get you into all the best places even without a fake no problem you're just gonna dive into that while our mom's still standing in the doorway yeah we can get into any club we want we have really good fake ids also we do drugs every hour and each of us has an std it's gonna be great what's with all the old books who brings books to college? Crazy Tessa, bringing books to school where you read books and talk about books and write essays on books. He's a nerd. The bookish vibe. I like that. The bookish vibe? The bookish vibe. Oh. Sorry. After, After you. you. No, no, no. Honestly, I insist. <laughs> So, no, yeah. my mother raised me to- If this isn't gonna be a reoccurring character in the rest of this movie, this entire interaction was the most pointless thing I've seen in my entire life. Go ahead. Oh no, you go ahead, I no, insist. No, please, My go mother ahead. raised me to make everything as awkward as humanly possible in these situations. Okay, so please. Just... Go ahead. Isn't this scene in the preview? I'm gonna hate this. Great Gatsby. It's a good book. Hate to spoil it. It was all a dream. Hmm, the Great Gatsby, huh? Surprised a girl like you knows about this book. It's pretty underground. Not a lot of people know this, but it was actually based on a movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Is that supposed to imply that she's getting feelings for him already? Like they've had enough interactions for her to be falling for this dude? I also love when a guy mansplains the ending of one of the most popular books in the world to me. It just, it really gets my gears going. You're going. Aren't we so glad that there's always conveniently a character like this who's there to pull the shy main character out of their shell? If it weren't for them, there would be no movie. And what a tragedy that would be. So, um, guys, truth or dare? I dare you to make out with heart. No. Ew. Where are you right now? It's really loud. Okay, so you go to college and now you drink. That's that's really great, Tessa. Okay, Noah. Where is this come? What? This relationship seems really solid. I think that they have a lot of trust. Ooh, he also has books. I bet he's not as material realistic and shallow as he seems to be. He has depth and I bet he has a soft spot only for her. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Guys, 
I don't think I can do this. I already want to die at how deep their relationship is because they both read books. I know that their faces are so close together because it's supposed to be building and showing us the tension, but I don't feel it. The only tension I feel is between me and turning this movie off. I know you're not gonna kiss, so just hurry it the fuck up. Pull away last second. Wait. Here we go. Off, Noah. Your mom said you shouldn't be partying with that roommate. Hey, Noah, aka mom number two. No one asked you, Noah. You shop at the Gap. Oh, yeah, I got it from the Gap. I'm not the only freshman in this class. Okay, I'm team Landon, you guys. Oh, Noah. Harden. I'm team. I'm team Landon. They're both freshmen, and he's not a total prick. I want to show you something. I think that it's better if we keep her distance. Something tells me that she's gonna go. It's always a good idea to get into cars with people you barely know, especially when they're mean to you. Oh, and he's taking her to the woods. Tessa, he's taking you to woods. Can I ask you something? No. Can I show you something? No. This scene has been going on for years, and nothing is happening. Oh my god, end it! End this scene! So, how about we play a game of second blow? Does this character just exist to like bring up games to play? Him and Harden live together because their parents are dating, so he's gonna call her. You need to come over. Stat, Harden is upset because you touched elbows with some dude at a campsite and you have a boyfriend even though he doesn't want to date you. Get over here. Oh, and also he breaks things when he's angry. He's husband material. I'm a mess. I think that we're both a mess. You are like the epitome of not mess. I mean, aside from being attracted to super toxic people and cheating on her boyfriend. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> Noah's my best friend. Not anymore. If I leave now, you're cut off. So she's cutting her off because she kissed a boy that wasn't Noah. Is the mom in love with Noah? I wish she was because then something would actually be happening right now and there would be some kind of plot. I mean, we all know that Noah likes moms. So. It makes sense. When you told me your mom was gonna cut you off, I had to do something. We can stay here for the rest of the year. When you told me that your mom was gonna cut you off, I had to do something. And I decided to go with squatting in my father's friend's house while she's in Italy for an entire year and not telling anyone. So I, I landed on crime. <laughs> How many montages do you need in one movie? <laughs> so, this is so boring. We're literally just watching montages of them go on dates or sit at home and eat takeout. One night when I was eight, my dad was at the pub, drunk as usual. He messed with the wrong guys. He messed with the wrong guys. They came to our house for payback. Came to their house for payback. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. And that's my dad. I need to go. What? Now? Jeez, just tell me where he is. Maybe he's at my bar. Yeah, obviously. We know this. She read the text messages that said, meet me at Blind Bob's at nine. And then he was like, oh, I gotta go. I thought we, I thought we were just assuming that that's where he was going. I'm Tessa and this is two and two. <laughs> she can't put them together. Make her fall in love with me. And then I'll just... Turn it off. So it's way worse than I thought. His friends didn't dare him. He dared himself. So does that mean then that he broke her and Noah up on purpose? And as a result, made her lose her financial support while she's going to college? Very wholesome. Definitely someone that you should stay in a relationship with for two whole more movies. <laughs> it's another sad montage. Do you want to be in a sad montage? Do you want to be in a sad montage too? Right here. There you go. Okay, look at the, look up here. Look up there. 
Beautiful. You did amazing. You were made for the camera. Tessa and Harden aren't talking, obviously, so we just get another sad montage of the two of them separately, but thinking back on the times that they had together, which even though we just saw all those moments in the movie and they were painful and boring back then, we have to watch them a second time in the form of a sad montage, just in case we missed it the first time. Miss Young, this is what Harden turned in. I think it was actually written more for you than it was for me. I just know that this letter is gonna be super cliche and make me wanna rip my face off. Let me try and guess what kind of essay Hardin would write with Tessa in mind, okay? I think it would start with Tessa. That's it. It just says Tessa in Times New Roman font. And then the teacher was like, this is an astounding statement on the solidarity of the human mind and how it can so easily become fixated on Tessa. A plus. I like how she only hangs out with Landon whenever she and Hardin are not currently speaking. I think it's really cool and fair how they are only friends when it benefits Tessa. You once asked who I loved most in this world. And it's still me but you come in at a close second. The plot is just how they aren't having sex and then they are having sex and then they go back to not having sex. And then these little scenes are sprinkled in between where they talk to meaningless characters about how they are or are not having sex. After my ass. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see the next one, but I'm gonna call it there. Thank you for subscribing. And if you are still here, Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you clicking on my video out of all the videos that are on here and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.